everybody, Caleb here. Welcome back to the Bull and Burley. Thanks for joining me again. Enter something pithy and comical here to say. So I got nothing today. Let's talk about the cottage business. As an artist and a craftsman um, who makes my living doing that full time, I make knives. And recently I've delved into starting learning how to do pipe carving. But as an artist and a craftsman, I find it's pretty important to me to support local businesses, small businesses, individual artists and craftsmen. It's really important to me as, as a maker and just as a human being to support my neighbors, as it were, um, and fellow, fellow artisans. So in the spirit of that, I am going to be covering one of the semi-local to me um, tobacconists artisan blenders that has been around for a very long time over a hundred years it's called lj paredes down in boston now lj paredes got a dynasty that reaches back to about the 1890s um i could i'm not going to give a full historical breakdown right here but you can go to their website ljparedes.com to look at it i think that's it i'll put a link below um they are a boston-based tobacconist on park in park square boston on park square in boston um, that does hand blended tobacco, hand rolled cigars. That's where they started. And to, they are semi local to me, but they are a family owned cottage business. And with the beauty of the internet these days, you can actually, as a, as a purchaser, um, as a supporter, you can access just about any cottage business around the world. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. So the LJ Parade Dynasty, I'm going to work my way through their entire catalog. All right, so I've just come off of a pretty long burly kick of a couple weeks where I was getting nothing but burly um, doing the last few tough couple videos and I'm about burlyed out um, my my preference is Virginia so in in that on that vein for LJ Paredes I've got a couple other samples I don't have any of the world famous yellow tins yet but I'm gonna order some this week um, but I did buy a bunch of samples a few weeks ago to start trying and I'm going to kick this party off with one of my almost immediate favorites. And I've only, sm I, and as I say this lightly, LG Praise. Um, and I say this kind of loosely, but it almost immediately became a favorite the second I opened the bag and smoked the first bowl. And that is number eight, Slices. Mm, yes. It is a it is a Virginia slice and chunky and delicious and oh my gosh the bag note tin note is wonderful it's heavenly it's like angelic like I just I swear there was like angels and stuff like coming down in like heaven and things happening like I had a spiritual moment when I opened this bag and started smelling stuff so um, and then I lit it up and it was just like you know like this is fantastic this is awesome i'm having the most fun i've ever had you know, with a pipe in my mouth so it's good um that's where we're gonna start number eight slices let's get into this i want you to see this okay so i had to change lenses for this one because i want to get all up in this stuff this is the pipe i'm going to be using for the review majority of it for this tobacco anyway this is my nordesian it is a failed shop pipe one of my early ones it had a lot of sand pits in it and stuff like that so that one's out but um, yeah, that's going to be their review. It's one of my best Virginia smokers. It's kind of dedicated for it. So let's get into this LJ Peretti. And pull it out and it comes in these thick bacon-like chunks. I mean, this stuff is awesome and it just has a very rich hay tartness to it. That slight fruity notes. I mean, look at that beautiful thing right there. That is a beautiful chunk of tobacco. Oh, look at that. You just can't go wrong with that. It rubs out pretty easy. Just a little bit of crumbling. Life is good and you're ready to pack this bad boy. Let's do that. If I got that broke off, might as well use it. So I'm just going to rub it out just a little bit. Get a little bit more off of there. There we go, that'll be good. It's not a huge bowl on this on this one, so LJ Parade. Let's make it pretty. There we go. Alright. 
I'm sorry about the creaking of my super old table. This thing's probably over a hundred years old, but it's a really cool table and I can't bring myself to ever get rid of it. It's barely holding up, but even when the legs go, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna rebuild it. Yeah, look at that. Now we're ready to pack, baby. So this is one of those ones that the first time I smoked it, the only time I've smoked it, I knew almost immediately it was going to be a favorite. I loved everything about the first bowl. And I knew that I was going to be ordering a paint can from LJ Peretti's full of this stuff. And I'm going to actually take a pilgrimage down there soon. I haven't been down to the store in person yet, but that's the beauty of online. And also I'm kind of a uh, country mouse, so the thought of going to somewhere like Boston kind of, <laughs> kind of geeks me out a little bit. Like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of people here. I like, I like being in the city, like it's cool. Boston's one of the coolest cities. You go down there for ball games and stuff. But I just don't like the getting there. Right. Pack's really nice. I think let's keep it kind of loose for this first. For the second one, I guess. A little bit more. There we go. Don't want to waste space. There we go. Packed up. I'm ready to go. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea if the camera's in focus. I don't really have a reference out here. So, but this is one of my favorite spots to sit on the property. I'm very blessed, especially as a craftsman artist, who typically don't take, make a whole lot. To have the property I have where I am at in the northeast. Like I said, I'm a country mouse. I live out in the middle of the woods. Thoroughly enjoy it. This is one of my favorite places to come outside. Got my fire pit, my wood splitting area. Great place to come outside, have a puff. Enjoy a pipe. Hang out with the family. work on getting my charring light going. Sorry, I'm a little distracted here. But if you live in the Northeast, you know, ooh, there we go. Learn how to savor this time of year. Like the end of summer, pre, pre-autumn, moving into fall. Cause you know, what's coming after this very soon. Winter will be here. And that's when it gets a little more interesting in the Northeast. LJ Peretti, number eight slices. I looked through my notes, this is actually the third bowl. I snuck off and had a bowl when I first got the package in that night. Um, snuck off in the middle, you know, late at night and had me a quick bowl just to, because I love, I love Virginia's and I, it smelled so good I just couldn't not. So I've actually had three bowls of this, this is the third one. There's an immediate peppery spice to it, peppery tang. Man, that is mellow though. It is mellow, spicy. Smoke in the retro hell just has that just pure beautiful Virginia flavor to it. A little on the sweeter side, which is how I like my Virginias to kick. Man, I love. I have a big sweet tooth, and um, I maybe didn't crumble this up just enough, quite enough. I think on the next one, I'm going to crumble it up a little bit more. But that is, that is like the tart and sweetest Virginia. Like good tartness. Like, like that fire ant I've talked about in some other Virginia videos. 
It has that sugar ant, fire ant tingle to it on your tongue, but it's not burning. With a solid sweet base. Solid, solid sweet Virginia base. It's, you know, in contrast to something like Blockade Burner, which is a rum soaked Virginia, it has more sweetness and less of the grass and hay note to it. My main thing to compare it to, um, that I'm going to compare it to, is the Green Dragon from um, the Country Squire, another cottage business down in Jackson, Mississippi. And I love the Green Dragon. It's one of my favorite all-time, uh, all-time meaning, you know, the last year or so of my life, um, that I've tried so far, blends of Virginia. And, and this it reminded me of it a lot right off the bat. But there's more complexity to this. This has more complexity. Sipping it is definitely, I can tell, the way to go with this. Golly, it just smells good. I'm going to go ahead and give this the Beard Roamer right off the bat because I remember the last two times that I had it and I just I had just that. Like the last day or so I've taken off from smoking in general um, just because I like to clear my palate, get all the burly stink out of everything um, before I start cranking on some Virginia. So I'll take 24, 48, 36 hours sometimes before I have another pipe when I'm doing a review of something just so I can get a good, solid, clean palate. And this is pretty much the only thing I'm going to smoke the rest of the weekend. Until that bag is gone. And then I'm going to order like, you know, a couple pounds of it. Yeah, this is going in the cellar. Let me work through this bowl a little bit and I'll get back. Okay, I'm about... Halfway through this bowl. And it has settled down real easy. into this beautiful, sweet burning, mellow Virginia. Just a good Virginia, golly. I mean, it's really mellow. It's, it's like, it's exciting. You have the piccolo playing all throughout. I'm, I'm a music person, I'm a melodic. Let's say I'm a melodic person. Half of my day, in here at least is to music of some kind most of it's made up but there's a beautiful Virginia melody going on in here and I'm gonna say it beard Roma I'm gonna give it a four The only five I've ever experienced as far as Beard Roma goes is Old Toby from the Country Squire just because it's, it's an aromatic. I like the way it smells. It is not It is a good tasting tobacco. I really enjoy smoking it. But the smell on it is my favorite smell. So that's why it, it has a five for a Beard Roma smell. But Virginias are always about a four for me because I love that natural, hay, tangy, sweet tartness of a Virginia. And this number eight slice from Peretti is just hitting every note, man. If someone were to put it to me right now, Desert Island blend, one tobacco the rest of your life, the only thing you can smoke, this would be it. And if I couldn't get this, the Green Dragon. All right, let's give it a little... Give it a little care here. Get a little ash off there. Let's do a little tending, tending the fire. Yeah, this is one of those bowls. Probably one of the best pipe bowls I've ever had right now I'm experiencing in my life. 
and I do not want it to end. The weather is beautiful outside, perfect, 75 degrees, 72. Virginia's tangy, hitting all the right notes. I'm not getting any nicotine really off of it yet. Not noticeable, which is what I like. I like a mild nicotine. Most of the time. Sometimes I like a good kick, but that's rare. Because it, you know, I don't ever want to be a nicotine addict again. Which nicotine is not actually the problem with, with the tobacco, despite all the crap out there. Nicotine isn't actually the issue with tobaccos, it's the delivery system. The delivery system is what kills people. Cigarettes being the main culprit. Oh my gosh, dude. It also has there's that there's a I don't know what else I don't I, I don't know what it is yet. I'm gonna have to talk to the tobacconist down there and I wanna have this conversation in purpose so in person so I get my proper information but there's a perettiness to it there's a peretti smell that I've noticed across all the tobaccos and maybe it's just an, an aromatic impartation to the tobaccos from their blending spot you know like because there's they use a lot of a lot of kias and orientals and all really cool stuff and so maybe there's maybe there's an oriental or something that has a really strong note to it or a lot of kia that some of the other tobaccos pick up in the in the in the room or whatever in the in the, the blending spot and so it has a little bit of that, a little bit of that to it in the retro hell, but I don't remember, recall seeing it as part of an, an actual part of the blend, like an Oriental lot of key. I don't think it is. I think it's just a Virginia flake. But it's very subtle. It's almost, it's almost there, but not quite. You know, and it's very pleasant. I love it. I love that that Peretti smell. I'm gonna call it the, the Peretti aroma. I love, I love it, I love it. I love this, this stuff is awesome. Yeah, I know what I'm doing with my Friday now. I'm pretty much gonna be nursing this bowl as long as I can. Thank you for joining me again though. Keep in mind, legacy. That's my philosophical thought for the day, legacy. The legacy of the handcrafted cottage craft artisan and craftsman community. To me, that's what pipe smoking, pipe making, tobacconists, that is, is kind of, to me, it's an additive to the craftsman that I already am as a knife maker. This is just to me as, as important of an industry. It's, it's an age old industry that's been around for a very long time. The art of blending tobacco is the art of making pipes clay or otherwise. Native Americans made made pipes out of clay, stone, wood. And where I currently sit, the native tribes have probably been doing something similar to this for a couple thousand years at least. So to me it's important to root ourselves in the heritage of the cottage craft. Especially in the, today's world where it's fast paced and commercialistic and you know as cheap and as quick and as much as you can I don't dig that I'll pay more I'll pay more for higher quality I'll pay more for something that has an artisanal aspect to it it was created or crafted or blended by hand because that's how most of us will leave a legacy so thank you for joining me again hope you have cool smokes tart Virginias fair winds and good friends.